Hi, and welcome to the Conscious Marketer Podcast. I'm Richard and joined by Kylie here. Hi, Kylie. Hello. And today we have a special guest, Tamara Thompson. And I'm really happy to introduce you to her because she's the one behind the scenes that kind of manages a lot of the the work we do with this podcast. And she is the CEO of Sirius Take Productions and founder of Broadcast Your Authority. She's directed her passion to build an agency that helps serve business leaders and brands to optimize YouTube, podcasting, and gain visibility through repurposing micro content at lightning speed. And, you know, I think I've done a few podcasts. And when I was redoing one, I was searching for somebody who could kind of handle all the back end stuff so we could just focus on producing great content. And she stepped up and she's done a wonderful job. Hi, how's it going today, Tamara? It's going great. Grateful that the team's working with your team as well. So they're uh, well, work. I know you're working with some of our producers behind the scenes, and they're just grateful to be have the opportunity to help you guys grow your YouTube and your podcast. And thanks for having me today. Oh, it's our pleasure. And I'm super excited to be talking with you today. And we're going to be talking about Web3 and the future of content marketing. And this is a new area that's developing. I know, Kylie, this is also one of your passions to figure out this this new landscape. Is that true? I still want to have a career in two years. So absolutely. <laughs> you don't want to be replaced by AI and bots and all kinds of you have to kind of figure <laughs> out a way. Well, maybe we could start, Tamara, by could you give us kind of an overview of what this what Web3 is and give us an overview of what people can be thinking about as the future unfolds here? Yeah, well, I think it all started with, you know, people are always like, what's the difference between Web 2 and Web 3? You know, and Web 2 is the area, we call it the, the dot-com era, right? And so it was the YouTubes, the TikToks, the Twitches, the, the 2D images and videos and things like that. And and it's what, where the uniqueness behind it is Web 3 is allowing people as individuals and creators and business owners to step into a space where they actually can create you know, this content that they can actually serve as a, as a purpose, but also build it as if it's their own, right? So like, like in Web 2, you're creating content for TikTok and they own the rights to it, right? Same with YouTube. You go into Web 3 and you can uh, create a, an entire marketplace on an application where you're creating the content. It's your content and you have proof of ownership when you create NFTs and things like that. So it's about creating content that you own the rights to. I heard a great way to explain it when Reese Witherspoon said it. She said, you know, I'm loving this Web3 space because I'm able to come in and create content and these projects and partner with people where I actually have been own the rights to certain things. And she gets royalties on things. Whereas when she was in Web2, she was like, it's like me working for like Lionsgate and Lionsgate has all the rights to all of my content and I don't. So if, if that's a way to better way to explain it, that's how we're moving with Web3. Because Web3, everything has to do with the blockchain, you know, and digital assets. So everything lives in the blockchain that relates to, you know, communities of cryptocurrency and transactions. So that's how we're tracking these things, you know, like... Ethereum uh, blockchain is an example. So Ethereum, a cryptocurrency that we're using as transactions is going to be highly used in the future. And it's currently being used in a lot of places too, even stores and apps and things like that. But how can you accept that into your business at the same time? So I think what's unique about it is you know, I have all these different like wallets, these crypto wallets where I'm accepting transactions and sales through crypto, you know, like where you have a business, you're accepting your know, cryptocurrency as payment. And what's unique about it is when you're watching the Ethereum blockchain, as an example, you watch it when Bitcoin goes up and Ethereum goes up, the value of your cryptocurrency can go up as well. So here you just received one Ethereum, which is worth $3,000. Tomorrow, it could be worth $3,800. That one transaction that you just sold could be worth a lot more. So it's it's allowing people to step into that confidence and step into learning and educating yourself about how you can step into this Web3 space to actually create products and experiences and join communities to put together a community experience for your customers at the same time. Like, be conscious about it so you know exactly like you want to plan it out, but think differently on 
how you're actually going to approach that that offer and be open to accepting cryptocurrency because it's where the future is heading. Mm. I have so many questions, like so many questions from that. But before we even go there, I'm so curious how you got into all of this. Yeah, so <laughs> back during uh, COVID, my good friend Randy Zuckerberg and I, we went on a golf trip and we have this whole joke about stepping into confidence and we decided to create this more of like a, a movement. First, it was going to be related to golf, but after COVID hit, we're like, what is all this stuff with NFTs and Web3? And we started paying attention to things and started sending her some messages and I got her into some things and then she started to to go to some conferences as well. We just started like just educating ourselves because we wanted to see what people were doing. It's still so early in this stage that so many people are just paving the way right now and people are just learning together. And I think what's unique about this is finding these communities and a lot of the communities on now, instead of using things like Facebook groups, people are using things like Discord and Telegram where they're literally having these conversations and everyone's so like kind, like they're just nice. People want to help each other. They want to support each other. And that's what really drew me in is having these conversations with people that I didn't know that were willing to help educate me as well. So now we're starting to build our own Discord community to help educate other people as well, to teach them like what they can do to help apply this to their business. So there's a lot of things that we're working on behind the scenes right now. But that was really what got me as I joined a, a Discord community. I joined a Telegram community. I was like, what is all this stuff? I was like, it wasn't like being on like face, a Facebook Live or watching a TikTok video. It was pure in-time interaction with people that were willing to help. And that's really just what got me. So... I'm not saying that everything's like that, but when you find those communities that are willing to support and here for like entrepreneurs and educational factors, you know, it's good to just pay attention to who those people are and, and just finding those like few in those groups and those communities that you really resonate with. And that's really how it got started. It really is a new world. I will bet to buying an NFT about a month ago. <laughs> and it was, Tell me about it. <laughs> well, I've, I've been, there's a graphic artist, uh, Rob, cicadas i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing his last name right but but he's been doing stuff for quite a few internet marketers quite a few of the big ones like russell brunson and give nations things like that mm -hmm. and uh, i own a few of his things and he offer he, he does these auctions you know for art and he did one of nikolai tesla that i really love and it was it was a first edition print plus the nft and so it because it was the first nft i had bought i had to go i had to go do a few things i had never done before and it was a little the, bit strange. The, the you know? setting up process <laughs> can be a little bit like daunting. You know, you're going through this process trying to figure out how to set up a wallet or, you know, go open an account on OpenSea, which is the largest marketplace to sell NFTs. That's and where, yeah, that's where we transacted it is on OpenSea there. Well, congratulations. Yeah. It's like once you, you do that, you kind of go through that process, like either how to purchase one or maybe create one and mint one yourself and then sell it. Like we're working on a collaboration right now where we're going to create a 10,000 piece collection with an artist that's already started mocking up our entire confident women collection. And our whole purpose is to help more women step into confidence into the Web3 space because it's a very low percentage. Even, you know, in entrepreneurship, we know there's a lot of women. It's for men and women, but at the same time, we're trying to help create this women to help showcase other women-owned businesses. So an example of how you can actually create a collection that has a utility, which is a value, right? So people are maybe purchasing an NFT, but they might just be purchasing it because they think it's cool or it's pretty or something, it's art. But behind these NFT projects, the ones that are actually creating a movement and theories and collections is actually putting something of value with it as well over time, right? So an example, like... Gary Vaynerchuk, right? So he has VCon coming up. He created his tickets as NFTs. They're on the, the marketplace, the OpenSea marketplace. So people are going in and purchasing those and they can go up and down and bid on them, but their tickets, it's that one asset that they can purchase that they own the rights to that ticket so they can actually enter that event. And so when you think about that in the business side, and you're building communities and stuff like that, like with our collection we're creating, we're going to have different utilities. Like if you hold this, this NFT asset, if you're in the beginning stages of this, or you're the 
one of the founders that purchased this, you know, you get an access to this event or this, this item or this upgrade or this experience. So that's what we're putting together right now because in this Web3 space on these projects, all the project teams create what they call the roadmap. Basically, we have a roadmap for our business models too. So it's the same thing in the NFT space. So these companies and projects put together this roadmap and it's so cool and unique to watch the experience because you're planning out like, okay, so this this season we're going to turn around and launch this series of NFTs. And let's say it's women in confident women in fashion, right? So we talk to a, a fashion business owner that's open to trying something and why not implement that each person gets this accessory from this fashion line with that NFT, you know, like help another business out as well with the collection. So it's not just like all about us, but you're helping people too. do that with your clients. Think about ways that you can partner with different collections or series. It doesn't have to be a 10,000 piece collection. It could be a really small collection. They have one-on-one artists that create basically one-on-one art. So one piece of art that they sell individually, uniquely, and those can be sold for a lot more than some of the other launches where they're just trying to help people understand and gain something. So it's really exciting. Like it's it's cool that you were able to go in and, and get an NFT. I was like, Kylie, have you gotten an NFT yet? I'll have to create Not one. Yet. I'll have to create Although, one and airdrop it to you once you get your wallet set up. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I'll take it. Yes, I will. I'm very excited. I'm very excited about what you said about women getting into the space. And I think I did see Reese Witherspoon talk about that also. Is she kind of talking about, you mentioned her, is she talking about women getting more involved and helping women get more involved? Because I feel like I saw that. Yeah, I think that's one of the most unique things as well. And actually, I'm connected to the CEO of Hello Sunshine, her company. And so we've been talking with them as well about potentially doing some partnerships because they're looking for ways to partner with people. So an example, like Reese Witherspoon has her book club, right? So why not create an, a confident women collection? It's like confident women with books, right? And feature those artists in the book club. So different ways that you can think to help other businesses as well. But you know, we're creating this. You know, we're creating this partnership. We're creating that. We're we're creating smart contracts. But we're also helping with exposure in different ways for the artists and the authors and things like that. And so Reese Witherspoon is doing some great things. She actually just partnered with a gal named Yam of World of Women F- NFTs. That is probably one of the most successful NFT launches. And she started basically a year ago. And each of her products right now are about 30000 a piece. And she just launched another series. The, I think it's the Wow Galaxy of Women or something like that, which is really unique. So it's it's fun. She went from literally a digital artist. She, was, she literally said in one of her interviews, she's like, I went from nothing to now partnering with these larger corporations. Another one, Boss Beauties is a great one too. She just partnered with Marvel. Like it's, it's ways and Barbie. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how can people think a little bit differently about, you don't have to just be an artist or a creator, but as an entrepreneur or business owner, create something of value that is a one time asset that you can, can give to your community too. You know, there was a great one that I became when I joined in the BFF founders. It's basically blockchain friends forever. It's a women's community. Paris Hilton just joined last night. They announced Tyra Banks, Mila Kunis, Reese Witherspoon, all these types of people. But what they did is they created a utility with a best friend bracelet. I think a lot of us, well, I know when I was little, I had like the best friend necklaces and bracelets and stuff like that. So they created a utility. So it's like anyone that had this bracelet could get access to the first minting of their collection, which was so unique. And so they're getting people hyped up to be a part of a community and you also have access to mint their first NFT. So they're teaching them through the process as well. But you're also getting this, this bracelet that also in the future will unlock opportunities for other things like a pass to their events or a, a pass to gain a book that they have coming out. So it's really just thinking like, differently with that. And that's what I think just being intentional though, with like how you're setting up your, your offers and your NFTs and your utilities. I think that's, what's going to help the most successful full people that are creating these projects, especially entrepreneurs that are trying to step in the space because when they have the intention to help other people and partner with people and see how you can help other people grow as well, everyone can be successful within that launch. And I think what's so unique about NFTs is the fact that in web three, you know, 
you know, web two, you know, people will, you know, sell something and that's it. You sell something, it's gone. Web three on the NFT factor, you can sell something, but you have the royalties on it on the smart crack contract. If you're the first owner and creator of that project. So every single time that NFT or that event ticket or whatever it is resells, you put in the smart contract a royalty fee that you receive over time, any, any time that it sells. So that's what's unique too. So you're, you're building this like kind of residual income as well with this p- project that you're super passionate about and you can see where it goes from there. So that's what I think is really unique for content creators, entrepreneurs mm-hmm. and business owners through this process. So I'm just excited to see it because this is like the first like year that people are like diving in, you know? <laughs> so it's so cool to watch. Yeah, it's really fascinating. I, it's kind of interesting because. I went through such a struggle session even to get that first NFT, but I was like, okay, I could probably do that a lot faster now. And I have a girl, I have two daughters basically, but it's interesting also because there seems to be a lot more feeling of like networking, collaboration, partnerships, more of a yin approach almost to like how, how can different people and different ideas connect with each other. And so that's quite powerful because we haven't really seen that in the market. It's definitely something new. Well, what's unique about that too is, like I mentioned, like two of the biggest communities that people are growing with, but but also Twitter. So those of us that were like, oh, Twitter died a while ago. (laughs) This is the type of, you know, experience and and, uh, industries that are actually helping. You know, it was cool because I uh, was invited to go into this like metaverse party today and I was like, this is exciting. I'm like, we won't go into all that stuff, but like just you're meeting new people in different places, these different communities, if it's discord or telegram or Twitter spaces or, you know, metaverse, some people metaverse isn't for everybody, but, <laughs> but it's just one of those things that's, that's unique. But I think also is the fact that it's allowing young creators, young artists, young entrepreneurs to build their brands. My friend Randy and her hug accelerator, One of her new clients is a 14 year old that just had a launch and it was a father daughter created collection and company. So they've, they've hired her and her accelerator to help them start with the business side. And that's what I'm jonesing about too, is having these opportunities and trainings and live streams to provide, you know, free content to help educate people. And then if they're interested, they can come join the continue the conversation in discord and telegram and see how you can help. But. It's the fact that this space is allowing a lot more people to dive in when they're open and just putting the intention out there that that it's it's for everybody. It just how do you approach which way you go in with your business? What are you most passionate about? What kind of communities do you want to join? What kind of offers do you have right now that you can implement something as an NFT or create something that gives your your clients more of this uh, cool access point of something that you have going on in the future. Like if it's current clients or or past clients or reoccurring clients, you could give them access to something fun. You give them an NFT that, that has these utilities and it just gives them some kind of thought of excitement, but then it might also, they might think like, well, how can I do something as well? So that's where we're at with our business model too, is figuring out some ways to, to help podcasters and content agencies because content's going in, like fast paced mode. Now it's like, if you're not constantly, you know, consistently posting the content or being the authority in your niche, like you've kind of like lost out. I think that's one of the thing with content marketing. It's, it's going to be around forever as well. And, but think about different ways to create content within the space with like NFTs or, you know, I think what's cool about content marketing is the side that people don't think, well, we could turn around, let's say an example, let's say you had like a large, like really great marketer on your space and they're highly searched on YouTube and, and you got their permission to take a little teaser clip, right? Like a little videogram is what we call it, right? What if you took that videogram and you got their permission, you said, Hey, I'm going to mint this as an NFT. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to gift this to you, but may I also create a few more so that we can share it in our communities and we can put it up for, uh, let's say we can put it up for sale right? And say, hey, but I'd also like to give you royalties on that teaser video because people get excited about things. Like if if, it, if someone said like, hey, o- Oprah, you know, like <laughs> you had like this little clip and they knew Oprah and she was like, sure, go ahead and create an NFT out of me. You know, whatever that looks like, like 
those types of things are happening with influence as well. So like, think about how you can create your content into NFTs, obviously with a plan of attack, but on, it's different ways, like thinking like that, like even like with podcasters, right? So let's say you have a really top podcast and you want to create your podcast image into like your main show image. You can take that because you own it turn that into an NFT and you can put that on your site. Maybe you have a whole collection of stuff that relates to podcast clips, right? Like you can generate things from that too. Obviously you have to think smartly and and how big is your audience, how big is your community, but why not like grow a discord community of like like like-minded conscious marketers in a discord community, right? Like find those people that resonate with you that are, you know, wanting to connect in other ways and just think differently for web three is where I'm leading with that. So there's so too. much. It, it's it's it can be overwhelming, but it, it's like if you just take little bits at a time, it it can be really exciting to to figure out when you kind of create that roadmap. Like, what does this look like? Like, what do I I have? Who are the connections that I have? Where's the community that I can help build out as well with current connections and clients with new con- communities? Like, uh, the cool thing about it is like being able to go into already created communities and just kind of pay attention to what they're saying and and befriend people in there. And, and there's a lot of great resources too, which are one of them that uh, that I liked is called Curious Addies. And so their whole mission was to create, it was the first educational NFT kind of platform like this last year. And and it was a husband wife duo that created the, the, their project and education. And then they created their launch of their NFTs within it too. And they just since re- released another series of NFTs, but they're doing some different cool things. They just got their projects and their brand up in billboards in, in New York. That were, it's like cool to see like what they're, they're doing. But they're super kind people and they just generally want to help people, and which that's why I really liked their community. And so it's just fun to to like just explore and do the research and find like those kind of groups that literally be like, Oh yeah. Like they'll they'll literally like write you and tweet you and you know, they don't have egos and it's just cool to experience that with people that have, you know, similar values and, you know, direction that they want to go because we're all in this together, basically like learning the space and growing together and changing as it goes. Cause web three, you know, it's, it started a long time ago, like 2006, but it wasn't really like, really didn't really take off to like this last year of like especially with like all the nft stuff that's been created but yeah there's so many opportunities i just keep watching and listening and partaking and just speaking to new people and that's what's really unique about it is just uh being open to some change and and uh, figuring out ways to implement it into business and partnerships and fun, fun things too so yeah it's it's so fascinating. Let me see if I can ground it a little bit because I'm sure that everybody listening to this is like, okay, I'm getting excited, but I don't know what to do sure. right now. You know, like it makes sense. Or or like, where do I turn? I've like, I want to get active, and I I'll admit that I'm not the best on timing. I'm a little, I'm normally a little bit too early because I I see things that are happening, and then I tend to think they're going to happen faster than they do because I can see where they're going and kind of my mind extrapolates. So you're probably like that with some of the projects. You can see where things are going. Mm-hmm. So what advice would you give to somebody that was listening and says, look, I, I have this idea to like make an NFT out of a mastermind or how do NFTs relate to courses or where should somebody like really start to explore and how can they, I, I would say, take it out of the mental sphere and actually create something like, like do a first launch or create the first project or like what's, what's a good first starting point? Yeah. I think the best thing that that I've seen is first indulge and jump into some of those communities that other people have already built some kind of success that you're, that you see them and you're like, okay, do your research first. It's always important to do your research first. And when you find those communities, like I just mentioned to you, Richard, about curious Addies, like on the side of like, they created this whole platform to educate people on NFTs. And then they created their, basically their NFT launch as well. So they're building this community of education. And I believe they have about 35,000 members in their discord community. I don't want to quote that number, but I believe that's how many they have in there. And so they've been building that community first and 
trying to figure things out, creating courses, free content, valuable content to connect with their audience, but also be there to help answer questions. So I think first finding those communities that you resonate with first to kind of ask those questions and then figuring out what tools you need to actually create this process and launch. And who are those team members that you need to help build this? Because you've got community managers in this space. You've got people that have to run your Twitter spaces, you know, because as business owners and CEOs, we don't necessarily want to be the people in there on the grind and the hustle and the build. We can help create the content, but you have to have that team that helps support and back you as well. So the, the thing that I've heard the most is that people are finding their community managers, their team members, the people that are willing to back and support them. They're finding them in these communi- communities already, the other ones, where they actually connect with them. They vibe with them. They have similar core values. And that's where we're going as well as we're having conversations with people and we tell them what we're wanting to do. And these other people are wanting to be a part of an experience. And, you know, if you don't give someone a a shot or give opportunity to connect, you you never know. So that's what's great about it is joining the communities first, asking for help and figuring out which resources to go for, because there's a lot of things and a lot of different platforms for people to use. But I think the first thing is to start joining a Discord community, also Twitter spaces, paying attention to Twitter. If, if people haven't been paying attention to Twitter, you know, a lot over the years, you, you know, Twitter's actually- They, been they have been the devices. last week with uh, Elon Musk taking, yeah. it, taking <laughs> yes, it over or whatever. So bought, it's hard to imagine it won't, it won't improve with somebody like that involved. So Yeah. So I think that's the thing first. And then figuring out what is it that you want to launch and create as an entrepreneur or business owner? Is it something that you want to create multiple of and have this like cool, like exciting experience where you have all these like pieces of art? Or is it something where you just want to have a minimal experience? Let's say you had a, a mastermind group, right? And you're trying to figure out like, well, what? well, maybe I don't need... 10,000 pieces of art to, to go out there. You know, maybe that's just one revenue stream that's because I'm passionate about helping women, you know, and, and building out these trainings and live streams and partnerships. But let's say on, on the mastermind side, you create, let's say there's 50 people in your mastermind, you create an experience with them. Once you've learned, you share the training with them, share the value of that, create that asset. If it's a ticket to infinite events or, you know, something, it doesn't have to be like that, but, but you know what I mean? Like create something. It doesn't have to be a ticket, but maybe it's an image that gets you access to a private exclusive experience that you have other influence or maybe celebrities stop by. They're like, people get this like, idea. They're like, well, wow, I have access to this and be like, oh, and like Gary V, he, he created his V friends, right? He said, I believe with when the people bought the V friends, which is really successful, those people get access to VCon, I think for the next three years. So it's like, what's, what can you create if it's 50 items, if it's exclusive and it's only three, three items, like how do you determine that? But first it's about thinking of the overall picture. Who is it that you want to help how many of these items do you want to create and who's going to help you and where you're going to find those people? That's what basically be what, where I'd say there. I love that. And I'm going to backpedal us a little bit, even though I know we're coming to the end of our time sure. here. I'm still going to do it. You mentioned Twitter. You know, we use Facebook. You, your company uses YouTube. I'm trying to figure out this whole TikTok thing. I'm not 12, so I don't know if it'll ever work for me. But, but, but I've been super curious this whole conversation how does web two then feed into three? Is it going away? What's up with the social media sites and should people still be using them or should we be like getting on a rocket ship? <laughs> I love that. Getting on a rocket ship. You know, I think it's just about being innovative. So social media and web two will, will stay, but understanding that video, they're basically, they're saying like, you want to make sure video is is the main element at this point. So uh, video, YouTube, Reels, TikTok, repurposing your IG Reels into TikTok Reels, or, you know, things like that. Like keep that short form content going. You know, let's say you have the little teasers from your, your podcast, but when you're thinking about it or you're inspired, go in and create that individual authentic content in the moment when you're feeling inspired and create another reel. Like at this point, video is the most important piece of web two and video is going to keep growing with web three as well, because you're going to start seeing people create a lot of NFTs on video clips and things like that. So 
Think about how TikTok went viral. You know, they own the rights to the content that we're posting, but why not take that clip, you know, and repurpose it or create a second clip that's very similar and you repurpose it yourself and create it into an NFT. Of course, you want to build a community first and, you know, get that momentum going before you want to push that out to try to create as an NFT. But it's about being creative with video in both sides of it at this point. But that's what they're saying is they're like, everything's like a hundred times in web two where we're like, oh, and that's why it's great with content marketing. Because if it's, you have the consistency pumping out content, but being able to intertwine it. So it's like almost 50, 50. So let's say you have a content marketing machine going, but then adding another 50% more content. I know a lot of people are saying like, well, I don't, I don't have time or I don't want to do that. And I understand that. But if, even if you batch record little clips, that's what I do. So I'm like, I'll like record like 12 little like IG reels or that also repurpose into TikTok videos. So I don't have to double take there so that I have like 12 videos recorded back to back in one day. I just changed my shirt and then I've got it for like the whole month, right? So if you post like three, three a week, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, yes, that's what's hard about like TikTok and things like that because you're manually posting. So you're taking the time to do so. But if it's truly important to you to connect with your audience in that way until TikTok finds a way to pre-schedule, you know, TikTok videos or anything like that, uh, which would be a savior for a lot of people if it'd be like, we could pre-schedule that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, same with LinkedIn, you know, like uh, different different types of things like within their own platform for people to help. It would, it would so help content creators to be able to utilize their platform more. They would have people be more consistent, but right now they're rewarding the people that do the consistent stuff. Cause you see TikTok videos that are like five to seven days a week. And you know, like I, I don't want to do that. Right. And I don't think a lot of people want to do that. Like I'm, I'm not a millennial, millennial. I'm yeah, <laughs> going up this way. And I'm like, Oh, I was like three times a week. I'm good. I can pull out my phone as long as I know that I have it pre-recorded. Okay, cool. It takes five minutes out of my, my time to put a catchy caption, you know, and being authentic or sharing a quick tip, put in the right hashtags and then just going from there. But I think that's where it's going to just kind of fuse. But people are going to think about ways to take that content and bring it into Web3 and create NFTs from it and projects and things like that. So that's where I think it's going to fuse. But Web2 is not really going anywhere. It's just about figuring out where your audience is and just fine tuning that along the way because it's just about being visible and consistent. So yeah, it seems to me like they could be great allies, two and three. Yes. Yes. I think they are. They're like, like peanut butter and jelly, like fusing you <laughs> together. <laughs> well, I think, I think too, that the, you know, I'd say that the timeless principle that web two really kind of helped level the playing field was that people could go, could reach their audience directly, but maybe it didn't completely level the playing field because the platform still owned the content and there was no, there was less ways to monetize it. It was kind of like you had to siphon people off of web 2.0 into your own platform or their email list. Exactly. To, well, it's even it. like, uh, well, even like, yeah, well, cause you could set up your courses and membership sites and stuff on other platforms. So it's about figuring out how to, like you said, infuse that in different spots or things like that, but just being aware of, when you're creating content, like who truly owns that content, like where you're, you're putting it out in the future. And I think that's where people are just thinking a little differently. They're like, well, I want to try something where I can build a community over here on discord and I can hop in on my mobile device at any time and, you know, check into it. And it's cool because you, you get people to chat with you you can set up a whole customer experience. I think that's what's, what's unique as well as when you're building out your brand and communities in web three, you still want to provide that customer experience that infuses you, your personality, everything that you stand for. That's what we're doing right now. I actually have a call on Friday with the community managers. They're going to help build out our discord so that it has that community experience. Like, how are we helping them? Who's going to be in there responding to people with their questions? And you just have to have that communication, though. Like, who are those people that are going to help you? So I think that's what's unique. It's like having like a Facebook group admin or something. But we're going into Web3, and it's going to be a little bit different there. So I'm excited to see where, where the future is going with this. So definitely just keep keep an eye open in this space. Like I'm not saying people have to like jump in right now. Like you said, Richard, like you're like, I feel like I'm too early. So I had this conversation 
with my friend Randy back in November. We were sitting at dinner in New York <laughs> and I like kind of put together this idea. And she's like, I think we're just a little too early. And here we are, April. She's already started an entire Web3 company. She launched her first mint last week with her, her whole collection. Now I'm going into my own collection. Like it's like, we literally was saying like five months ago, we we're like, we're, we're too early, you know? But it's like, you're never too early because what happens is you go through and you build the momentum, go through the experience, no matter what the success is, it's a learning experience. And then you can find, define and tweak and create an, another experience there and be like, well, you know, maybe I didn't like that as much as this, but I have some great ideas now and suggestions from other people that have helped me on this journey. And that's what I'm excited about is going through the process, giving it a, a try. I think a lot of people just don't take action or they just hold themselves back or or they just don't, they, they get stuck in their own head, you know, and they're like, oh, well. You know, if you have questions or thoughts, just start making a conversation with people in the communities and just kind of get some clarity on where you want that to go. Because there's so many people in there that like just want to help. <laughs> and that's what's cool about it. Uh, so I'm, I'm just excited and grateful for the experience just to learn with everybody else. Well, there's kind of this this meta context that I think could probably get missed where somebody's yeah. like, OK, I'm going to create this NFT or, you know, create a collection and I'm going to be a gazillionaire and, you know, life's going to be good. But I, but I think that I would, I, you know, for me, even getting that first NFT, you know, uh, I felt like I was late doing that. You know, I'm definitely not early on that one. <laughs> now you have to create and mint, mint your, yes, I do. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's, I don't think it's about so, like, Hey, I need to, I need to mint, you know, Richard Tobinger, artwork dolls or whatever the thing is you should you, you could do uh, like uh, we can use the, kylie kylie has a better face we could use we the, can do kylie. The other ones that are popular is getting your <laughs> getting the nft of your first and last name dot eth that's oh like dot eth okay right? yeah so like people are doing that and all, all the celebrities have done it it's kind of unique to be like okay well i'm gonna get my first and last name dot eth and i'll be like i am tamra thompson dot eth you know, like, <laughs> this is me. You know? <laughs> right. Um, Officially and, change your name to that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just going to, I was just going to say that I think that the idea really is that we don't really know where probably a lot of this is going, mm -hmm. but as you learn the tools and stuff, especially as an agency, people turn to us and they say, how do we do this new thing? And if you haven't done it yourself and you haven't kind of dipped your toe in, then you kind of, it's, it's hard to see where things are going. But as you, as you do take that, take small baby steps. It's like, like you see things that you wouldn't see and learn things. It's more about maybe the experience. Is that true? Yeah. So we actually were talking with a new partnership where our agency is going to partner with them as a power partner, where we do the same system that we do with our project podcasting agency side, but on a different level. So it's not just podcasting. So it's YouTube content specifically repurposed into TikTok reels and so on. But all the call to actions will be to basically promote to join the, the discord community. So, <laughs> so it's about thinking like how your agency can help collaborate with other agencies as well too, like, especially with your own agency, like what can you do over there? So I got excited about that idea. Cause I was like, well, if this is where this is going, as well, like why not have an opportunity? We already leverage YouTube with our clients. You know, here's people coming in with short form content. And if they want to create massive content here again is repurposed content, massive amounts with a sprinkle of their own, you know, authentic clips that they sprinkle in as well. So it's, it's cool to watch that as well. And this partnership is going to be awesome because like, they're like, well, we love what you do already. Can you just formulate it where it's just this? And we're like, let's do it. Let's, let's see where it's going. Cause these collections, these artists, these creators, these entrepreneurs are looking for that as well. Some of them are coming in and having some successful launches. I know boss beauties came in and had over, I think 2.4 million in like one day. She had set this up for very well though, business side, everything built the community first, everything like she, she did this. There's some other, you know, smaller ones as well. They've, they've launched their collections. They haven't had that much success, but now they're looking at ways to tweak it so that the next experience that they provide can be set up too, because they have those communities to help them, the mentorship, the content that will help push those communities too. So, so yeah, you can't come in thinking like, oh my gosh, yeah. Cause that's the kind of the facade that gets put on there. Like, oh, like 
people sold his collection or his NFT for $69 million. So I was like, well, there's different stories behind <laughs> this and why and connections and things like that. And But as long as you're open to just not putting an expectation of wanting this and learning through it, like it's all going to come back to you like tenfold, you know, like where you're yeah. supposed to be, where you're meant to be, what's supposed to come from it. You're going to just going to learn and grow from it. And so when you're humble about it, just enter the space that way. And I think a lot of people will be more successful than they think. They just have to have that confidence too. Well, this is, this is wonderful. I, I think we're going to have to have you back soon tomorrow because I started to think about baseball cards and attention, attaching it to makeup brands and then car brands and limited edition things. Well, it's, and it's the and my thing. mind went to where we just attach every product sold has some kind of NFT attached to it. So I think That's there's so much we could go. <laughs> well, you, well, you know, I used to collect baseball cards. Um, I had thousands of baseball cards growing up and you Did know, you? That's like, that's cool. And uh, Dan Fleshman, you know, he just started his card baseball card companies tr creating franchises again. And I was like, this was like the 1980s. I'm like, but this is smart. He's like reinventing this stuff too. But he's also talking about how people should get into crypto and NFTs. And the, yeah, it's the same thing. You look at an NFT like a baseball card. Like here's your Ken Griffey Jr. back in the day at the Seattle Mariners back in the 80s, you know, and um you know, you could recreate those too. The developer that's actually helping our launch, he's helped create several launches for athletes. But, you know, now you've got like different people like, gosh, there's a lot of people going in, but like football players, like creating these like exclusive cards, NFTs that look like baseball and football and basketball cards. So it's cool that they can literally go into any industry now and, and do that. And that's what I'm excited about because I'm, I'm like creating my, I'm, I'm collecting my old baseball cards, but they're like NFTs, <laughs> you know? So, so yeah, it's about this thinking like, what, what is it like? Yeah, exactly. Like, Oh, you get this uh, baseball card with it, or, you know, you have uh, access like to this and this specific football player is actually going to come be on your podcast, you know, like it's, it's different ways to, to think about it. Just make these partnerships with those, those people too, because that person could benefit as well from that NFT that you create. So, and I know we could go on for, for hours on this, but yeah, just thinking a little bit differently, like how can that one asset be just your own? Cause you, you have the rights to it, the creation when you mint it. Well, thanks. Thanks so much for joining us today on this call. It's been like super, super lively and inter interesting to me. It's definitely opened something up in me. I don't know how to explain it, but I can, I feel more potential. And you know how you kind of like, you think back, oh, if I had just really understood what was happening in 2012 when Facebook just opened up advertising on the timeline and I understood what that meant before everybody else did, what, what kind of advantage could I have gotten if I had just jumped ahead? And I, I feel like this is a, it's another, point in time where there's kind of mass adoption and some things are happening. So thanks so much for joining us. Now, I want to make sure everybody knows how to find you. Now, your website is broadcasterauthority.com or one of them probably. Is that correct? Yes, we have broadcasterauthority.com. That's for those that are looking to launch a podcast and have the content marketing system with their podcast. And then Series Take Productions is our other website, which is our company that does the same system, but for people that already have a podcast. Yeah, great. I love Instagram and Twitter. Find me Tamara Thompson official on Instagram. I love Instagram stories and reels and stuff like that. So to pick it up over on TikTok, but working on that one now because I'm going to go very focused focused on content marketing and Web3 stuff in the future. So I'm excited to just uh, continue that too and just take that lead, you know, as we're all in this together right now. So very, still very early for everybody. So anybody that literally has an idea, you can bring this into Web3 and just uh, ask for help along the way. Mm, thank you so much. I enjoyed listening to you as much as probably everybody else will. So thank you for that. Well, I thank you. Thank you both for having me today. I've been super yeah. grateful to share this. I get all excited about things. You can probably tell I'm just really passionate about <laughs> this space and content in general, just helping people figure out how they can incorporate yeah. this into content as well. So thank you again. Well, we really appreciate working with your, your companies and uh, you've been a, a godsend to us as well. So thanks for everything you're doing. And I think it's a, it's a long road ahead. I'm kind of interested to see what the next five years or how that'll all unfold. And so thanks so much again for being on our podcast and thanks for all the listeners listening here. Head on over to 
your her site and we're super excited to have you here thanks so much the, the next podcast we'll, we'll have to do it in the metaverse the metaverse or <laughs> right right or you'll point us over to your discord channel we'll lead everybody there so yeah no oh my great. god that's awesome i appreciate we're you. doing it <laughs> thanks so much and thanks Thank for all the you. listeners Thank you. bye for now